Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jack Douglas. For tonight's armchair vacation somewhere in America, we have something different yet colorful and exciting in store for all of us. Now, this special program will combine the world's finest underwater show with the world's greatest all-around water show in a beautiful, spectacular Aquafest. <laughs> Wikiwachi Springs, the Shrine of the Mermaids, is located on the Gulf side of Florida, north of Tampa. And speaking of mermaids, looky here. You do believe in mermaids, don't you? You bet we believe in mermaids, or at least we will before the performance has ended. And here, approaching the giant spring, are more mermaids girls between the ages of 18 to 25. The setting is magnificent, but nothing takes place on the surface of this enormous freshwater spring. The show is entirely underwater and viewed by the spectators from comfortable seats in that auditorium. Now, most of the auditorium is submerged, some 16 feet below the surface. The glass, by the way, is three inches thick to withstand the fantastic water pressure. Well, it's nearly showtime, and the first group of mermaids from among the 20 who will be seen await their cue at the submarine well. There's the fanfare, and the greatest underwater show on Earth is about to begin. The welcome to Wiki Wachi is amplified throughout the auditorium, and cues the mermaids. They'll enter the pool by diving into and through the submarine well. What appear to be ropes are actually air hoses. These enable the mermaids to stay underwater indefinitely. Well, fortunately, the mermaid doesn't have to worry about the giant clam known as Calamity Jane. Ouch. Fact is, Calamity has to sleep with one eye shut, all because of her friend, Professor Bubble Trouble. Now, Bubble Trouble is an insomniac, poor fellow, and he's forever getting up to see what time it is. Apparently, it's time to get up, for the water lilies are beginning to unfold, and they awaken the sleeping beauties. Waiting for some of the show's highlights, consider these amazing facts about Wikiwachi. This underwater Grand Canyon was created by nature, not by man. The depth of the spring is unknown. Professional divers have gone 400 feet without seeing bottom. And more than 168 million gallons of water flows through the spring every day. 168 million gallons. And winter or summer, Hear this, the water temperature is exactly 74.2 degrees. Mirror, mirror, we see double, and we should, since there are two mermaids demonstrating the underwater version of this old vaudeville routine. And routine is what's in store for Professor Bubble Trouble. It's the Monday morning wash, and this is probably the only underwater wash line in the world. And now one of the show's truly picturesque segments, the high wire act. It's lovely to watch, and although there isn't any danger involved, the mermaids have to be quite skillful to maintain balance because of the current. For as I mentioned, the water in this huge subterranean cavern is constantly on the move. Let's watch. At intermission time, the curtain goes down. Rather, it goes up. Millions of air bubbles. But let's not waste the intermission. 
Let's see the real interior of Florida on a brief cruise of the Wikiwachi River aboard the side paddle wheeler, the Congo Bell. This old shack is called Trader's Landing. The river at this time of year is quite deep, yet the water is so clear you can see bottom very easily. The river abounds with wildlife. You know, there are no billboards here, no telephone poles, no skyscrapers. As it was, so has it been preserved. And in these peaceful surroundings, interrupted only by the slush of the paddle wheel, I began to appreciate all the more why the American Indian resisted the onrush of civilization for as long as he did. Now watch this magnificent creature as it seeks its nest on a limb of a cypress. It will make an upright landing as it reaches the nest. The riverboat pilot brings along slices of bread for a family of raccoons. And there's going to be some competition for that second half of the slice. The fish are also nibbling at it. This rustic Robinson Crusoe type shack shelters several wild boar. Now they roam the nearby woods, but when the Congo bell sounds her horn, they come a running. Their reward is an apple. Now in the next scene, watch the piece of pipe closely and you'll see an apple tumble out. Yes, he got one too. The huge black bear isn't allowed to roam the riverbanks. He's fenced off to protect the smaller wildlife, so they really make sure that he gets fed. Confidentially, he just assumed they kept their measly old bread and just let him lose to chase a few raccoons. And this cool cat isn't cool at all, the Florida puma. And incidentally, the puma is very much at home in the Everglades. Well, the Congo Bell makes a turn at the bend of the river and takes us back to the auditorium for more mermaids and merriment. And we're just in time to see Professor Bubble Trouble setting up his music stand for the overture. Now, he's making a mess of things as usual, but the musical mermaids hardly need a conductor. Apparently, Bubble Trouble likes a different kind of music. That huge object dimly visible behind the mermaid isn't a whale, but a fiberglass conch shell, big enough for the mermaids to stand inside. It's an air chamber used by the mermaids when they want to rest or to change costumes. The mermaids do have a pet bow, a mechanical dolphin propelled by an air motor. let's have an underwater drink, but as you can see, Bubble Trouble is having trouble with his bubbles. 
But seriously, how are these mermaids able to eat and drink underwater? We put the question to one of the lovely mermaids. Well, I believe the secret of drinking pop underwater is to exhale all of your air into the bottle. That when you do that, that forces the liquid or the soft drink into your mouth and uh, it's very easily done. After a while, it becomes second nature, just like drinking on land. Now, tell us about the first time you tried drinking underwater. Was it easy to do? No, sir. When I was, when I was first learning, um, I was drinking and drinking and swallowing and swallowing, and I thought that the bottle must surely be empty, but when I lifted it away from my face, it was still completely full, and I had just been drinking the water that was around me. And that was because I hadn't exhaled my air into the bottle. Now, since these mermaids spend literally hours each day underwater, women in our audience especially might be interested to know how the girls manage with their hair. Here's the answer. Well, the water is very drying to our hair, and we do require a few more oil treatments than if we had a normal everyday office job. And we do require a few more washings to our hair, wash it about twice a week, and that confuses people because they figure with us being in the water so much that we shouldn't have to wash our hair. Thank you, mermaids, one and all. You put on a show that's worth seeing over and over again at Wikiwachi Springs, the Shrine of the Mermaids. Next, the world's greatest all-around water show at Cypress Gardens and some of the most breathtaking action water films that I at least have ever seen. Now, the show at Cypress Gardens changes every few months, so even if you've seen it before, I'm sure we have some surprises for you. First, this intermission on behalf of our sponsor. Cypress Gardens in Winter Haven, Florida is not only the best known outdoor entertainment attraction in Florida, but one of the most famous in the world and the biggest and best all around water show on earth. Now, before showtime, you can walk around the magnificent gardens or cruise the inlet waterways and canals. Throughout the gardens, the emphasis is on beauty. Along the banks, you'll see dozens of these charming young ladies wearing antebellum costumes, and their job consists merely of looking pretty and waving to the visitors from the 50 states and foreign countries as well. Most spectators prefer to be seated on the lawn at the edge of the beach. And the fanfare gets the show underway. Now first, some precision boatsmanship. It's an interesting way to catch the attention of the spectators, make the latecomers hurry for a seat, and it also clears the water for the skiers and other performers. Now the show is formally underway. A swan ballet is performed on skis by a lovely blonde and blue Miss Judy Scott. You know, all of us, I think, get a charge out of seeing an expert make a miscue. I guess they appear more human when they do make an occasional flub. Watch. A trio now featuring the pink lady. Another beauty, Miss Brenda Reed. Notice that the tow lines are attached to the life jackets of the two skiers so that they can use their arms to hold Miss Reed a lot. It's nice work but it's not a picnic. Now the tempo picks up and the men take over to put on a dazzling exhibition of jumps and turns. Here's the action, much of it in slow motion.
now watch the top of the picture closely for some truly remarkable shots. To show you the action from the viewpoint of the skiers, we mounted a camera on one of the skis, and here's the water and the hazards as they appear to these skiers. The audience, of course, never sees this. Only the camera could show what the skier sees. After that tense and sometimes terrifying experience, we're in for some laughs with the Cypress Gardens clowns. routine, the clowns portray escaped convicts and they're constantly being chased by a Keystone cop, who of course never succeeds in catching them. operates on land and water is called the Amphicar. It's made in West Germany. From the ridiculous, we go back to the sublime, the lovely Aquamaids. The Aquamaids change costumes throughout the performance. Now an act that has become a trademark of Cypress Gardens, the Pyramid of Nine, three men and six aquamaids. What appears to be just another water skier is actually the introduction to skiing without skis. Watch as he spreads his legs and releases the skis. Now, backwards if you please. barefoot but from a standing start on the beach.
finally and perhaps most difficult of all, a start from the water. Here at the very start, the pressure against the body is terrific. He lets go the tow line and somersaults, and hard. The Flying Kite Man originated at Cypress Gardens some years ago, and this attraction seems to increase in popularity as the years go by. It's a novel way to see the countryside. He'll soar up to 500 feet, sometimes more. There are two flying kite men at Cypress Gardens, and their skill and daring has prompted their pals to coin a chilly rhyme that goes like this. He floats through the air with the greatest of ease. If the kite collapses, he won't need his skis. Well, he won't need his life jacket either. Every great show should have a showstopper, and this year the crowds at Cypress Gardens have gone wild over three marvelous skiers who perform crazy eights, patterns representing the figure eight. Here, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the most skillful and thrilling water acts of all time. Well, the performance is over, and it's time to wave back as the young southern bells smile goodbye. But if you get the chance, you come back to the lake, Lake Eloise, when the crowds and the skiers have gone for the day. It's a sundown setting you'll not soon forget. And it brings down the curtain on your Aquafest. During this Aquafest armchair vacation, we have presented only the highlights of the entertaining shows at Cypress Gardens and Wikiwachi Springs. Now, the shows naturally run much longer. I'd especially like to thank the performers at Cypress and Wikiwachi. They're not only attractive young people, but superb athletes as well. Next week, more faces, more places, somewhere in America. Until then, this is Jack Douglas saying thank you so much and good night, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls.